J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Boy, Oh Boy. played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I bring you our master of ceremonies, a man who... Hold it down. Jack isn't here yet. Well, where is he? I just let Mr. Benny and Nickel to make a telephone call. Oh, he's probably talking to his lawyers again. His lawyers? Yeah. Harrington, 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 and Drew. <laughs> it's about that accident Rochester had with the Maxwell a couple of weeks ago. Remember when we were up at Marchfield? Oh, but that was Rochester's fault. He was driving along and smashed right into a truck. Well, Jack claims that truck cheated. It had brakes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's open the door and listen. Okay. Gee, I hope I get my nickel back. It's my life savings. <laughs> Quiet. Shh. Yes? Yes, Rochester was on his way to Marchfield to pick me up. But the accident wasn't his fault. The truck driver didn't stick his hand out. Yes, but... Yes, but... Yes, but... Uh, look, look, who am I talking to? Harrington, 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 or Drew? It's gotta be Drew. Well, look, Mr. Drew, uh, make a note of this right away. The damages to the Maxwell amount to $158.64. What? How can I lend you my pencil? We're talking on the telephone. <laughs> Four names on the door and no pencil. <laughs> well, now look, Drew, I'll tell you what. You get in touch with the trucking company, and if they're willing to settle out of court... What's that, operator? Another nickel for three minutes? Well... Well, now look, Drew, if you get in touch with the trucking company, if they're willing to settle out of court, <laughs> it's okay with me, but tell them that $158.64 is what I want, and not a penny less. Goodbye. <laughs> What a workout that nickel got. I'll bet the buffalo lost six pounds. <laughs> Duck, fellas, here he comes. Yeah, da -dee -da -da, da -dee -da -dee. Oh, sorry I'm late, kids. Uh, go ahead, Don, introduce me. Okay. Uh, who are you talking to, Jack? Mm? <laughs> oh, on the phone just now? Oh, uh, oh, that was an old girlfriend of mine from Waukegan. She just got into town. <coughs> Boy, was she a hot mama. Then why did you call her Droop? <laughs> The years have taken their toll. <laughs> anyway, anyway, she's in town and we're stepping out tonight. Oh, stop, will you? We heard you talking to your lawyer about that little accident with the Maxwell. Oh, so you were all snooping around, eh? Well, if you want to know something, it wasn't a little accident. My goodness, look what happened to Rochester. Well, I saw Rochester the next day and he didn't have a scratch on him. Well, fortunately, since then, he's had the hives and he's all bandaged up now. But I'm not bringing that into the case unless I have to. There's just one thing I can't understand, Jack. You say that Rochester bumped into the truck. That's right. The truck driver didn't stick his hand out. Well, I'd say that your brakes must have been in pretty bad shape. Hmm. So if I were the judge, I'd look into that. Well, you're not a judge, and if you don't keep your big fat mouth shut, you won't be an announcer either. <laughs> Let's settle down and get on with the program. Do you think that... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Well, kids, I did it. Harris done it. Congratulate me. Congratulate you? What'd you did done do, Phil? <laughs> what happened? Well, I passed the midterm examination at night school. Oh, so you're out of the beginner's class, eh? You're not a freshman anymore. Nope. From now on, I'm a semaphore. <laughs> Where 
Connors. First, you're a freshman, and now you're a semaphore. Let me ask you something, Phil. When are you going to be a sophomore? Who knows? I may quit school before then. Well, I give up. I'll just let semaphore ride. How were the examinations, Phil? Were the questions very tough? I'll say. Here's a sample, Mary. Name the 48 states and give the capital of those that have them. <laughs> those that have them? Phil, every state has a capital. And I doubt very much that you answered that question correctly. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, try me out. Ask me one. Okay, what's the capital of Idaho? Boys Town. That's Boise. <laughs> Boys Town. It's Boise. The reason I remember that is because when I was in Vaudeville, Boise, Idaho was one of my best towns. They loved me in Idaho. Then why did they throw baked potatoes at you? <laughs> they didn't throw them at me. I got paid in potatoes. <laughs> get it straight. Say, Mr. Benny, did you get a big salary in those days? Well, I don't like to brag, kid, but I haven't played Boise since 1927, and I've still got half a sack left. <laughs> And I uh, love my starches, if you know what I mean. By the way, Phil, what other subjects did you have in your examinations besides geography? Well, we had arithmetic and history. Uh-huh. Hey, fellas, here's a tough question I nearly missed. Who crossed the Delaware, Washington or Lincoln? Oh, that's, that stumped you, eh? Yeah, so I flipped the coin, it came out of Washington, and now I'm a semaphore. <laughs> Phil, that word is... No, no, I won't tell him. No, now, Phil, let's, uh... Phil, let's forget about night school and have a band number. Okay. Say, Phil, tell Jack about that new subject you're taking up. Oh, yeah, I forgot to give you the hot news, Jackson. You know what I'm studying this term? French. French? Get a load of this. Jer mon jay la fenetra. Oh, very good. What does that mean, Phil? I ate the window. You, you ate the window? Yeah well, What the heck do you want to eat a window for? You eat bread, you eat rolls, you eat cake Wait till I learn them till then I eat the window Well, here's a tip for you, Phil Stay out of French restaurants You better stay out of them too till you learn the language Oh, I can read French Come on, Phil, let's have your band number <laughs> Tell them what happened to you at Gaston's the other night Oh, that could happen to anybody Come on, Phil, play well, Wait a minute, what was it, Mary? Well, you know how Jack likes to show off Oh <laughs> Well, we sat down at the table And naturally, the menu was all in French All in French, all in French <laughs> For Forget it And what happened? Jack ordered a nice, thick, juicy Watch your hat and coat with mushroom sauce <laughs> Well, eventually, I got to stay. Uh, go ahead with your number, Phil. I've got to go out in the hall and call up my lawyer. Has your lawyer got a phone? There's a phone in the barber shop downstairs from his office. <laughs> They'll call him. Don't worry. All right, hit it, Phil. Now, look, Mr. Drew, uh, you tell the trucking company that if they don't settle right now, I'll take them to court first thing in the morning. Postpone it till Wednesday. What do you want to postpone it for? Oh, Harrington is wearing your suspenders. <laughs> well, you can try the case with your pants at half mast. Be there tomorrow morning. <laughs> no wonder they call him Drew. <laughs> now, Drew, Drew, tell the trucking company... What's that, operator? <laughs> Tell the truck company I want $158 to straighten the chassis, $8 for a pair of headlights, 64 cents for a wing for the on the radiator. Goodbye. <laughs> hmm. Be 
people don't stick their hands out, they've got to pay. What are you mumbling about? Oh, this darn case has got me all upset. Anyway, that was High Neighbor, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Very good, Phil, although it was a little loud. Phil? What? I say it was a little loud. Well, how do you know it was loud? You were out in the hall and couldn't even hear it. I couldn't hear your band? Phil, you play in the Biltmore Bowl of the Biltmore Hotel here in Los Angeles, don't you? Yeah. Well, I know some people who live at the Biltmore that haven't been able to sleep since you opened, and the Biltmore, I mean, is in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> And I'm not kidding. Well, it's their own fault. They ought to close their windows. Oh, fine. You know, like I said, they ought to manger la fenêtre. That's eat the window, you semaphore. <laughs> We're two words ahead of that semaphore there. Now, let's get on with the show. Let's, let's get on with the show here. Come on. Where... Now, let's see, where, uh, where are we? Boise, Idaho. We are not. Well, someone just hit me with a potato. <laughs> I don't care, we're in Hollywood. Now, let me announce our play. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for our dramatic offering this evening, the Benny Retreaded Thespians <laughs> are going to present an original mystery melodrama entitled The Fright Wig Murder Case, or He Died With His Tupon. Now, I will play the part of Detective Captain O'Benny, as fearless a bloodhound as ever sniffed a clue. Phil Harris will be Sergeant O'Reilly, my assistant sniffer. Mary, you're going to be the wife of the murdered man. And Dennis, you're going to be the victim. Gee, there's no future in that. I'm going to be your wife. What have I got? Quiet. Now, let's see. I want a bigger part, Mr. Benny. Why don't you lay on the floor and be the murdered man? I wish I could. My feet are killing me. <laughs> Uh, who else? Oh, yes, Don, you're going to be the butler. Oh, every time we do a mystery, I'm the butler. Why can't I be a detective? Because any man that can't look over his stomach is apt to overlook a clue. <laughs> Say, <laughs> Say that, that's all right. That line was pretty clever, eh, Mary? What do you care? You saved your money. <laughs> well, I liked it. Now, before presenting our mystery, folks, let me give you a brief synopsis of what happened up to now. On the night of January 24th, A.D., after dinner, Mr. Homer J. Frightwig, a social lion, was found murdered in his den. Just before the murder, his wife was in the room reading a copy of Live Alone and Like It, which may have thrown her a thought. <laughs> the victim was playing solitaire when he was suddenly interrupted by a lead kibitzer. <laughs> now, who committed this crime? <laughs> Was it the chauffeur? No, no, I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. Innocent. Was it the butler? I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't do it. What do you mean you didn't do it? At the time of the murder, I was in my neighborhood grocers buying a package of jello with a new locked-in flavor. Oh, yeah? Please believe me. It's America's favorite gelatin dessert. And it's economical, I tell you. Eek, 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 eek. Now pull yourself together. Was it suicide? No, no, I didn't kill me. I didn't kill me, I tell you. <laughs> what? Me is my best friend. I love me and me loves I. You gotta believe me. <laughs> and now the wife, Mrs. Homer J. Frightwig. Did you or did you not kill your husband? I hated him. I loathed him. I despised him. So that. Night, I... Stop! We can't give it away, folks, but this mystery will go on immediately after a song by Dennis Day. Sing, Dennis, I'm going out and call Harrington, 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 and Drew. <laughs> Tomorrow, just you wait and see. 
Sally will bloom again And Jimmy will go to sleep In his own little room again There'll be bluebirds over The white cliffs of Dover Tomorrow just you wait and see The White Cliffs of Dover, sung by Dennis Day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our mystery melodrama, The Frightwig Murder Case, or... <coughs> now, as the scene opens... Uh, lay down on the floor, Dennis. Uh, you're the murdered man. Lay right there on your back. If I lay on my back, I'll snore. You're getting paid, and you'll stay awake till the program is over. <laughs> now, as the scene opens, we find Detective Captain O'Benny and Sergeant Phil O'Reilly in their office at police headquarters. Curtain. You see. There's the phone, O'Reilly. Oh, really? <laughs> Never mind, I'll take it. Hello, police headquarters. Hello, I want to talk to Detective O'Benny. That's me, what is it? Uh, my name is Mrs. Homer J. Frightwig. I want you to come over to my house right away. My husband has been shot. Oh, really? Is that for me, Cap? I said, oh, really, O'Reilly, shut up. <laughs> now, madam, what makes you think your husband was shot? He's laying on the floor and there's an extra buttonhole in his shirt. <laughs> There is, eh? Well, I'll be right over. And don't make any more buttonholes till I get there. See you in a few minutes. Okay, Cap. Bring some white rock. <laughs> I ought to bring some aspirin for that cold of yours. <laughs> Goodbye. What happened, Cap? Homer J. Frightwig has just been murdered. It's up to me to find out who did it. I think there's a woman in the case. A woman, eh? Well, you know the old saying, manger la fenêtre. That's cherchez la femme. <laughs> now, you stay here, Sarge. I've got work to do. I'll take the patrol wagon. You can't. The boys are delivering beer in it. <laughs> oh, then I'll take the squad car. And I'll solve this case, or my name ain't... <laughs> well, here it is. This is the place, all right. Open up in the name of the law. This is police headquarters. Doggone, I forgot to release the brake. <laughs> Well, I'll try it again. Better come with me this time, Sarge. Let's go. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Pick up some pretzels. We got a barrel left over. <laughs> that is all. Step on it, Sarge. We got to solve this case and get back. This must be the place, Sarge. Open up in there. Come on, open up. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, eh? Make a note of that, Sarge. Okay, Cap. Now, come on, you. Where's the murdered man? That ain't a brass rail you got your foot on. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, pardon me. That's okay, Mr. Benny. Shut up. <laughs> now, the first thing we got to do is grill the suspect. I thought the Frightwigs lived here. They do. Suspects can be anybody. <laughs> now, wait a minute. 
Are you the butler here? Yes, sir. What's your name? O'Reilly. O'Reilly? Shake hands with O'Reilly. O'Reilly, 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 O'Reilly. <laughs> now, let's get on with the case. Wait a minute, who's this? Are you Mrs. Frightwig? No, I am the French maid. The French maid, eh? Well, tell me, where were you at the time of the crime? Je n'en sais rien du tout. J'étais dormi dans ma chambre et j'entendais un bruit terrible. Alors, je m'habillais immédiatement et je descendais. Hmm. Je ne sais absolument de ce crime féroce. Je suis innocent. Je vous affirme complètement innocent. Il faut que vous me croyez. Hmm. Translate that, Sarge. Are you kidding? <laughs> Well, you're studying French, aren't you? What was the maid doing tonight? She didn't eat the window, that I know. <laughs> A fine help you are. Now, let's get to work here. Where is Mrs. Frightwig? Here she comes now! Good evening, gents. What's all the commotion? Oh, hello, Mrs. Frightwig. I'm here to find out who killed your husband. Oh, let's not talk shop, Cappy. Come on over here on the sofa and sit down. None of that, Mrs. Frightwig. I represent the long arm of the law. Well, wrap it around me. I'm lonesome. <laughs> I haven't got time for that. I have, but I'm a married man. Quiet, Sarge. Now tell me, madam, where were you at the time of the murder? Back of a gun, minding my own business. Back of a gun, eh? Then you admit you killed your husband. Sure, I admit it. Uh-huh. And why did you kill him? He was always singing shortening bread. Oh. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby loves I know how it goes. Well, I don't blame you, Mrs. Frightwig, but I still have to arrest you in the name of the law. Wait a minute. Hold everything. Nobody leave this room. Come in. What do you want here, fellas? Pardon me, but we're looking for Jack Benny. I'm Jack Benny, but you'll have to wait. I'm right in the middle of a play. Well, you'll have to stop your play. This is important. Now, wait a minute, fellas. What's going on here? Who are you? I'm Harrington. I'm Harrington. I'm Harrington. I'm Drew. <laughs> oh, my lawyers, eh? Now, look, fellas. We're I want here to tell you, my good man, that you are in the soup. The what? You're in the soup, the soup, the soup. You're in the soup, the soup, the soup. You tell him, Drew. You're in the soup. You're in the soup. What do you mean, I'm in the soup? Well, let's review the facts. Whereas, you've got to admit that a truck was hit at a certain arterial junction. Whereas, oh, that. Look, they, they claim that your chauffeur just wouldn't pull over or mayhap his brakes wouldn't function. Oh. Whereas, they state that your Maxwell was minus an Axel, thus knocking our case for a loop. To wit, you're in the soup, the soup, the soup, the soup, the soup, the soup. Now stop. Now look, gentlemen. It wasn't Rochester's fault. The truck driver didn't have his hand out. He didn't have his hand out. Poor lad. Poor lad. Well, I would say that things for him look bad. Look bad. What is this, anyway? For his ugly crime, he surely will serve time And then hang by the neck until death Until death, he will hang, he will hang until death No, 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 I don't want the truck driver to hang, fellas Now let's get this straight Rochester started out from Sunset Boulevard and Vine Street to pick me up at March Field And everything was all right until he got to Figueroa Street Figueroa? Yes. Figueroa, 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 you get silly gadoosh, shinamarusha, balder, all the all 30 days, 30 days. You get silly gadoosh, shinamarusha, balder, all the all 30 days.
Now that's about the silliest thing. <laughs> I'll be darned. Fine lawyers I've got. Come on, let's finish the sketch. Yeah, who killed me? We'll never know, Dennis. Play, Phil. Here's a grand jello treat, friends, that your family will add to their list of favorite desserts the very first time they taste it. And it's one of Mary Livingston's own favorites, too. A beautiful, tempting dessert called Cherry Flake Jello. All you need to make it is a can of grapefruit sections and one package of cherry jello. Just dissolve a package of Jell-O imitation cherry flavor in one pint of hot water and grapefruit juice. Turn into a shallow pan and chill until firm. Next, break the glistening Jell-O into tiny flakes with a fork. Then pile lightly into sherbet glasses, garnish with grapefruit sections, and serve. The result will be a tempting blend of canned grapefruit and rich crimson cherry Jell-O, a treat the whole family will want to enjoy time and time again. Many grocers are featuring canned grapefruit and cherry Jell-O all next week. So get both and make up this swell dessert. But remember when you buy to get genuine Jell-O, because Jell-O's new process locks in its extra rich flavor. This is the last number of the 17th program in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday at the same time. Say, Mary, do you want to come to my house for dinner tonight? Uh, yeah, what are we going to have? Oh, Rochester picks up some baked potatoes and a nice Virginia ham. Oh, you played Richmond, too. Yeah, I went over big there. Good night, folks. <laughs> the Jell-O program is written by Bill Morrow and Ed Ballard. Have you plenty of Jell-O puddings in the pantry? If you haven't, better get several packages tomorrow so the family can keep on enjoying those grand pudding treats they love so much. There's Jell-O chocolate pudding, one of the smoothest, creamiest puddings you ever tasted. And it has such a rich, mellow flavor, especially developed for Jell-O puddings by the famous Walter Baker chocolate people. Tomorrow, when you order Jell-O, ask for Jell-O chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch puddings. Jell-O puddings are just like grandma's, only more so. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles.